Well, hello there, and this is Auntie, and I am here to do my review on 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After, Season 5, Episode 5, Drive Me Crazy. If this is your first time being here, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And to all of my new subscribers, everybody needs a sweet old auntie, right? Having one, it just would be nice. Everybody needs a sweet old auntie, right? So welcome to Auntie's Advice. Welcome to the family and to all of my nieces and nephews and my members who have been here with me for the long haul. Thank you all so much for your continued support. If I was to rate tonight's ep or last night's episode, I would rate it a C minus um, because it was just the same old foolery. <laughs> but we're going to get through it, right? Yes, we are. So um, the first couple that I want to talk about is Sinjin and Tanya. Sinjin has basically told Tanya, How did I get here? Okay. <laughs> Sinjin, um, we see Tanya go out and have, um, get her nails done with one of her girlfriends. I believe it was Monique. I know both of them names starts with an M, but it was one of her girlfriends. And during that conversation, she was telling her girlfriend, you know, basically that, you know, Sinjin is not doing, you know, what he's supposed to do, that he is not able to balance work life, alcohol life, drinking life, smoking life, partying life, work life, her, um, all her cries. And, and so the girlfriend was like, okay, girl, you is really being tested. The girlfriend realizes that Tanya is a lot. And it, that's just my opinion. She realizes that she is a lot. And she's like, you know, she has this accident. I guess it wasn't her fault. Um, but it is going to require a lot from him. And so she understands where he is in this relationship. Later on, he takes her out to dinner. Wait a minute. Before I even go there, I noticed that when she is with around Sinjin, that she acts like she cannot move. Like, I mean, she's just absolutely limping, whining, moaning, grinding, all that kind of stuff. But when she was with the girlfriend, she was walking up straight <laughs> and everything. I mean, it was damn near like she didn't need to crutch. So I was like, okay, she's, you know, putting a lot on when she gets around him. And I don't know if it's because she requires that much attention from him or that he doesn't give her that much attention. Either way, something is going on with Tanya. And so they sit down and they have dinner because he said that they don't get an opportunity to go out. And this is his way of bringing her to a neutral place where, well, not neutral because he's in public, but I guess he felt like he needed to have this conversation in public for some reason. And he is telling her that this America thing isn't working out for him. He made a decision to come to America, according to him, for her. And it is not working out. He says that he doesn't want to be a millionaire here in America. He just wants enough money to be able to get a home, sit there and chill and smoke weed <laughs> and drink. But that is not the way that that life happens here in America. We all have to work and we have to do our part in order to have the lives that we have. It requires a lot of work. Don't I know it? As tired as I have been over the last couple of days. But okay, this isn't about me. But um, he is telling her, you know, I don't want this. And so she's saying, you know, you need to buckle down and you need to make a decision about what it is that you want. And he told her, I basically have made a decision. This is not what I want. And she said, you know, well, we have goals and dreams of having children. And he was like, well, how can we have those goals and those dreams about having children when I'm not your soulmate? Why would you even want all of them? <laughs> I thought I was going to get through this and not laugh. <laughs> He's like, come on now, girl. 
Come on, soul sister number nine. Now, you thought that you could get away with that and you could say that and I would just brush that off and I would continue to go on with my merry little way. He said, uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh. It's not going to work like that. He, You know, I need you to, you know, let me know how you plan on having all of these things with me and I'm not your soulmate. And so, of course, she gets emotional about it because she knows that what he has said is the truth and tells him that she owes him an apology. And he's like, you know, you know, I apologize, you know, for whatever, whatever. He, There was no reason for him to apologize. This was his way of saying what it is that he wanted to say to her, what he felt like he needed to say to her. And this was her opportunity to listen. Sinjin has, you know, when he got here, he had, you know, 50 potential things that he wanted to do <laughs> here in America. He is not stable. And I'm hoping that Tanya hears his heart. But, you know, Tanya wants what Tanya wants. She still wants a child. She told him, he said he didn't really want to raise children him here. And she said, you know what, I turned out okay. And I'm sitting up there thinking that's questionable. <laughs> okay, excuse me, y'all. That's quite questionable. So, I mean, you know, the two of them are still going back and forth, and I'm hoping that they figure it out some kind of way. I don't think that Sinjin is happy here. He hasn't, you know, he got here, and he was tricked into a she shed, and the she shed was she shed. And I really do believe that Sinjin should um, have the opportunity to say what it is that he needs to say, okay? I'm looking at my side view, and I'm cute. Okay. All right, the next couple that I want to talk about is Paul and Kareem. Like, Paul, I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed in you, Paul. I don't know what to do. We see Paul at the hotel, and Kareem, Kareem is trying to change the baby's diaper. And he said, let me help. And she's like, I don't want your help. I don't know why Kareem has stayed with Paul. I guess maybe, you know, when you love somebody or you think you love somebody or you know, hell no. Because I didn't go through none of that. <laughs> I just didn't allow myself. I just knew that I needed to take care of me. And if I was the best me, then I could be the best me for my child. I don't have to. I, I did, never felt like I needed to stay with my daughter's dad. Um, rest in peace. I, I never thought that I needed to stay with him because I had my daughter. Uh -uh. I knew that I needed to be a healthy mom for her. And that's exactly what Kareem needs. Corrine is not even seeing the best of what America can offer. She's not seeing the best life or anything. And nothing that Paul has shown her has been better than her living environments in Brazil. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's just not doing it. He goes and has lunch, you know, with his mother. For some reason, he just ordered one order of tempura, nothing to go with it on the side. And the mom had an omelet. I didn't know if the bitches was at breakfast, lunch, or dinner, okay? <laughs> So I was like, okay, the sun look like it's going down, but is the bitch coming up? I mean, you know, I was just confused about what Paul and his mom were eating. And so, you know, Paul is sitting there and he's trying to manipulate his mother by using Pierre, you know, to Pierre E to get his mother to give him some money. And the mother's the mother is like, no, you're not gonna have me go back home to my husband who has already said you can't be here. He even tried to make an excuse saying that Kareem needed to use the restroom and that's why they're having problems in their relationship. And the mother was like, I'm calling BS on the play. It was not because she could not get in the home that she was miserable. She's miserable with you, period. Mama is really making Paul step up. Paul is asking his mother and telling his mother, I just need you to give me some money to get on my feet. And the mother was like, you know what? How many times, Paul, have you asked for money to get up on your feet and bitch you always keep slipping and landing on your ass? The mother was like, no, unequivocally, you can't get any money from me. And I was just like proud of the mother. And she looked like she, <laughs> she looked like she really felt proud of her damn self. You know, like she wanted to pat her own self on the back. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad about that. And so Paul is like, you know, I have limited funds here. He should have stayed until he was able to build up his savings or his checking account or whatever it is. 
that he needed to do. But the mother was like, I'm not going to bail you out this time. I'm not. And you can't move back home with us. And so, you know, Corrine's family, you know, were willing to be there and help. And that is the way that they were raised. And, of course, they never had to raise a Paul. But Paul's mother has had to raise a Paul. And she was like, I'm sick of it. And you're still not getting that key to the house. And so he goes, you know, and takes Corrine, you know, out um, to go and look at homes. And he was talking about, you know, the living conditions in Brazil and how bad it was with them. And then, you know, so you got Soul Sister number 10. And, you know, she got her head wrapped on looking a hot ass mess. I said, this bitch is not a real estate agent. She takes them to this trailer, right? The trailer ain't got no walls. It, you know, it is just filthy. It looks like rain's been in it. I'm, I'm sure it smells like moldy and, and just any. And Paul has the nerve to walk through the joint. Okay, and Corrine is like, okay, it's hot in here, it's raggedy. This, although where Corrine lived at was dirty and filthy, it did not look like this. Paul should absolutely be ashamed of himself. I don't know if that place was selling for $250 or not, but whatever it was, he had no business taking her to that. How can you dare say that America is better? Corrine says, my idea is to be living in a beautiful home with at least two bedrooms, running water walls, bitch ceilings floors just the, the basic and paul has taken her to something that is less than what she lived in in brazil now granted that place was a hot ass mess but it did not look like this so then he takes her to another uh, rv okay because it was an rv the bitch was sitting on wheels okay <laughs> and it may be the city life that I live in, but when I see a, a a house and it's on wheels, in my opinion, it's an RV, and I don't mean it to be offensive to anybody else. I just only I only know what I know. Okay, so don't get offended, damn it, if you living in the trailer and you got wheels underneath the bottom of it. You do what you do, but okay, for me, I can't do it. But anyway, um. He takes her to another place and, you know, he asked, asked the woman if it had running water and if it had hot and cold. And she was like, yeah, you know, like, what the fuck are you asking me that for? But when she went and took them into the first place, she was like, I don't know about the plumbing. I don't know about this. I don't know about that. And I'm thinking to myself, the fuck are you showing it to them for? You know, some things you should know about the property. As a real estate agent, y'all know I want, you know, to, yeah. But, you know, some things you should automatically know. And this woman and did not know anything about it. And Karini was like, shut up, Paul. No, Paul. Shut up. No. You terrible husband, Paul. <laughs> you terrible, stinky, filthy husband. Oh, Paul. So they riding in the car and everything. She won't even talk to him. He's like, isn't it better to be in a car than it is to be in an Uber? Disgusting. He takes her to a grocery store. And she's like, I'm not impressed with this. We had, you know, wonderful... Um, rest, I mean, um, 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 grocery stores in Brazil. And my daughter has gone to Brazil. I think that's, you know, her favorite place. She loves Brazil. Okay. So I know that it is, um, beautiful over there. Okay. Something just fell. I don't know what the hell that was, but it kind of creeped me out. <laughs> the hell was that? I hope I ain't got no Angela, no rat up in here. Okay. I better not, bitch, much as I paid for this house to live in this damn neighborhood, bitch. Okay. But anyway, I digress. Let me see if I can continue to move the hell on. And so, of course, you know, we, we're done with them. The next couple that I want to talk about is Angela and Michael. Angela is leaving, and she is going to Nigeria to be with Michael. Angela realizes the weight of this particular trip because she is going to be Michael's wife. And so Angela is frazzled. She has her girlfriend, Amy, come over and Amy is going to be assisting her daughter, Skylar, with taking care of the kids and her mother. And so Amy is, you know, helping her get all of her stuff together and all of that. And again, you know, the weight of everything is on her. Angela goes into, you know, her mother's room and or the living room where she has her mother set up. And the mother really doesn't look good. <coughs> if we have noticed week after week of taping, you really can see that the mother's health 
it deteriorating it de deteriorating and i just was like really sad it, it it broke my heart i think that at some point you just gotta stop filming you gotta care about the person that's laying in that bed and not about you know ratings or whatever i think that angela should have made a decision um that was in the best interest of her mother and I, I, you know, I, I, and, and for us, we're not going to be able to get any closure. We're going to remember seeing the mother in that condition. You understand what I'm saying? And I think it just really doesn't look good to me. I didn't like it at all. Um, and so anyway, Angela is, Angela is basically um, getting in the car. She's calling her girlfriend on the phone. She's talking to her girlfriend on the phone about all of this and she gets to the airport she arrives in nigeria um and then she gets with michael and so michael was there to greet her angela is much calmer this time when she gets him you know she's i, I guess just the shock of what she's about to do michael puts the things in the car and they go to an apartment the two of them have decided that they're going to rent an apartment because they need to see whether or not they can live under the same roof with one another and i'm sure that michael's mother is just a little bit more comfortable with him being it with angela this way and so angela gets to the place and she says she's a little leery about it because she doesn't know you know what michael has picked out and so they go in and the place is you know beautifully decorated i guess you know for probably what they're running it for and angela's walking from room to room she says that the bed is too hard and if he expects to get any sex from her that he is going to get have to get her a softer mattress she said the, the mattress was as hard as an erection so we see angela get up and go into the kitchen she still and she was like michael what the fuck is that <laughs> and so michael was like what she was like right there and so you know of course she's screaming and hollering because bitch is a rat in a trap Angela is screaming and going the hell off because this rat is in the trap. Michael's like, the bitch is dead. She said, yeah, and it's dead and it got germs on it. I don't know if that was a setup or what it was, but okay. And so, you know, basically, Michael goes and he gets the rat. He chases her around the house with the dead rat because he don't want to pick that motherfucker up Eve, okay? And so, you know, they're running around and all of that kind of stuff. And Angela is happy, you know, for the time being. She is happy, she's satisfied, and she's about to marry Michael. The next couple that I want to talk about is Andre and Elizabeth. Y'all, it's a lot of couples, bitch. <laughs> Andre is just being a complete and total asshole. Andre is in, in his family's home in Moldova, and she is there, and she is, you know, the seventh wheel there. She doesn't understand a lot of their language, Romanian. They're speaking, you know... So she's in the kitchen with the mother and the mother is talking and she can't understand a damn thing that the mother is saying. And she's saying that she wants to be able to bond with the mother, but she realizes that she can't bond with the mother because she just don't understand the language, okay? And so they sit down at the table and everything. And when they sit down at the table, all of a sudden Andre, you know, starts being Andre. Now, she's saying that, you know, he has this, you know, trying to act like he's a typical, um, that he... he Here's where I'm irritated with her at. Andre did not change his stripes, bitch. He didn't change a spot on him. He is the same mother there that he is here. Same person. He hasn't changed anything. And then you're going to talk about, no, now you um, American. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. So they're sitting there and everything. The mother has prepared coffee and prepared a meal and all that kind of stuff. And he goes into this, you know, this tirade about, you know, a Moldovian women serve their men. They bend over backwards. They cook the meal. They scrub all the dishes, bitch. They, you know, they sucking dick. You know, they, 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 they flipping it over. They doing all kinds of stuff. And then they take their asses out to work too. Never did I hear the mother say that she went to work, but okay. 
So Elizabeth is like, so what are you trying to say? That I don't do that? You mean to tell me that you don't recognize that I make the bacon, that I fry the bacon, I feed the bacon to you too, so your bitch ass can stay home all day and take care of that baby? Okay? And he's like, so what are you trying to do? Embarrass me? You, you, you trying to insult me in front of my parents? Bitch, don't do that. And then the thing about Andre is he doesn't even interpret what his mother said because he has his own agenda about this. It is his goal to make sure that he tears that woman down and make her feel about this small every goddamn day of her life. And you know, but if she did not treat her father and her family the way that she did, I would feel sorry for her. I hope she gets every tongue lashing that mother got to give her. You understand what I'm saying? I cannot stand her ass because she manipulates and she controls and she's two-faced and she talk about her <laughs> and she talk about her family when her family not around. She don't have anything positive to say about anybody. Nobody. And she knows that this that she goes out every day and, and she works. Her daddy work and he is working and living off the family business, bitch. So he basically is letting her know in so many terms, you need to step your pussy game up and do exactly what I want you to do. Okay, pussy cat. And so she is now sitting there and feeling it because she doesn't use the best china. The mother said, I do this every day, but bitch, I brought out something special because, you know, hey, you here today. When I have company, I bring out the best china. Having this conversation with Andre is fruitless because this is the mofo he is. Andre goes and meets with his friends, okay? He hasn't seen his friends in a while, and all of them are, you know, sitting in a restaurant and everything, waiting for them to come in, because you know T.O.C. set that sh up. And so they going in and everything, and they like, hi, you know? And so when they get their asses in there and everything, and they start, you know, talking, the friend says that, you know, Andre has changed since he's been to America. He said he used to be a man who used to work hard, and now he's just a sheep man, okay? He's just a man who wants to, you know, sit at home and, 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 and live off the work of his, his wife. And he doesn't care. And he is proud about it. And he tells his friends, why should I have to work when that bitch working? Why should I have to get up and do anything? I shouldn't have to get up and cook my food, bitch. I shouldn't have to do anything because I got her. And I am proud of it. I worked all my damn life. This is the biggest scam I've ever ran and got away with, bitch. He said, I don't care anything about it. And she's sitting up there talking about some sort. You're going to be macho around your friends. You're going to, you know, try to be, you know, this. And you're going to try to be that. He is exactly who he is in, in Moldova as he is in the United States. You let him talk to your family any kind of way. You let him manipulate your father to, to fly the family and himself out to Moldova for you to have a second wedding for the fuck what? You didn't care. You manipulated your father. You care. I hope he give you the tongue lashing of your goddamn life. I hope he uses you till he can't use you anymore. I, I, I just, I, there's so many other things y'all that y'all know damn well. I want to say, but I really hope he take her for a ride of her goddamn life because that's exactly what she's doing with her family. Even when she sat there and was talking about her sister and was like, you know, my sister's loud and she'll know what to say and I hope y'all like her. You set yourself, your sister up for failure. You've already put out the information to them. So they have already labeled your sister. They're going to already be ready for your sister. You little lying, trifling, no good for nothing, manipulative bitch. I hope he take her for everything she fucking got. Her and her, well, not her daddy, but the rest of them. Rude ass self. She gets in the car and he's like, did you get everything out? You don't understand me. I just don't want my sister to come. Bitch, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. The next person that I want to talk about Oh, God damn. How many more couples? <laughs> How many more couples I got, y'all? God, I got Larissa. I got Debbie and Colty and Jess. But it's somebody else. Asuelu and Kalani. Y'all. The last time we saw Asuelu, Asuelu's ass was on a bus. Going to nowhere, bitch. He said that he was going to go and find himself somewhere to stay for the night. 
Kalani said that she texted him and was like, where are you at, Oswalu? And he gave her three different false locations on the phone, gave her three addresses that were incorrect. And she was riding her ass around desperate for this mother. Yo. She said she finally texted him after the third wrong location and was like, I'm not going to continue to drive around all night. The sun is coming up, bitch, and I'm tired of riding around looking for you because I'm so desperate and my self-esteem is so fucking low. Oh, my God. Can I go in on this book? Yeah. Then he finally sent her the right address. After that bitch walked up out of there like that, I wouldn't have tried to find him for all that got tea in China. You. So, of course, you know, she gets up in the morning and the family is there. They're at the family home in California. And dad has arrived and so has Kolani. And so they're sitting down. Kolani is aware of what's going on, but Papa San doesn't seem to know. And so they sit down at the table and she's acting all edgy. And so Daddy says, Where's Asuelo? She said, Well, he's in the room. Dad said, Why he in the room? Why is bitch ass ain't sitting at the table? And so of course she begins to, you know, the mother and her, you know, gingerly tell Daddy, you know, Big Daddy, Big Daddy. Big Daddy, Mr. Kalani Daddy. <laughs> Big Daddy, Mr. Kalani's Daddy. He was acting an ass in the car and he was disrespectful to not only your daughter but to your wife. And so she was like, you guys, and he was like, what the fuck? Go get him. So Kalani was like, I don't want you to get involved. I just want to handle this. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Handled this on my own. And so the mother was like, Pinky, swear that you won't act out. This is baby's party. So the dad reluctantly pinky swears and says he's not going to knock an ass. But at this point, dad is at, 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 at he's like, it's right here. Bitch, it's right here. So, of course, Kalani goes into the room. Oswello's in there beep, 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 playing video games. And she's like, you know, you want to get up and wash your ass so that we can go ahead on and have this party? And he's like, no. And she's like, I mean, you know, it's your son's birthday party. I don't want to talk to nobody. Well, get your sh and get the f out of here. Find a way to Utah, bitch, the best way you know how. Bitch, I don't care if you have to ride on a pigeon, bitch. Why is he there? What a weak, weak woman. It's disgusting. You knew that this had a fourth grade education, bitch. You know it's something wrong with him. You knew it from the time you met him, and he was. <laughs> you knew it from day A. You know this mofo didn't have it all together, but you wanted him because you thought that you was going to be able to control him and you were going to be able to manipulate him, and you can't. This mofo is arrogant, pompous, and I'm going to tell you right now, he look like he will break his foot up off in her ass. And you are allowing him to act an ass like this. Let your daddy whoop his ass. Ain't no pinky, pinky promise. Ain't none of this. It's all of this. Cow. It's that dirty fight. It's that busting a bottle on the street, bitch. Did she say, okay, well, that's all right. Do whatever you want to do. And now here it is, the party. You got all these chicks, because I ain't seen no men. All these chicks sitting around talking about, we all swallow. We all swallow. He in the back, bitch, playing video games. He's in the back being his age. He's acting as intelligently as he can, bitch. 
Something is the fuck wrong with him. But she has allowed this. And she told me Oswelu is making this party about him. This is what he always do. But you still with him. In this abusive, allegedly, relationship. For me, it's abuse. It's mental and emotional abuse. And I'm telling you now, I will swim the seven seas, bitch, for peace of mind. Ain't no way in the world that I would take let a piece of dick make me lose my peace of mind. Fuck a that. Daddy is out there. He's like, this is his first birthday party. And this bitch is fucking it up. So Daddy Papa Song goes up in there. And he, you know, he like Oswelu. When he did that, I thought about my daddy. When he leaned his ass up on that corner, on that on that counter, and he had that side eye like this, you know, you, you know you fucking up your son's birthday, right? You know you need to get your bitch ass together. You know you need to go on out there. You understand me? You understand what I'm saying, Oswelu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I understand. He said, back in the day, I'd have just commenced to whooping his ass. We'd have been like two lions in the wilderness, bitch, fighting for the hill. He said, but because I promised my wife and my daughter that I wouldn't, I ain't. But here's what I'm saying to you, Kalani Daddy. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Whoop his, I guess. We sick of you talking. We saw you was a big guy, because when you was in that door, Big Daddy, you was feeling that door, Big Daddy. Now, I know you married. I ain't trying to disrespect your wife. But Big Daddy. Mm hmm <laughs> Big Daddy, we need you to stop talking. Because the more you talk and make threats, and the less you do, make you look like you a bitch. Now, I don't believe you one because I saw them eyes. When them eyes were sitting up on the side like that. You understand what I'm saying, I swear, Lou. Then Kolani is like, you know what? This what he do. He pretend, he fake. Y'all forced him to pretend and fake. Should have left this bitch ass in the room. You shouldn't have let him come out. That little boy not going to remember that birthday party. And he it's not going to be uncomfortable to him if you all don't make it uncomfortable. He knows his father is his little buddy. He knows he's my buddy. My buddy. Okay? He goes with me wherever I go. My buddy. My buddy. He knows that this bitch is a big-ass cabbage patch doll. He sees his father playing games all day and eating yogurt. So after the party, Oswello says, you know, today was rough. It was rough. She said, yeah, it was. Do you have anything you want to say to me? Fuck no. Why should he apologize? Apologize for what? You allowed this kind of behavior. You wasn't owed an apology. You went and got him. You should have let him stay where he was. Let him stay where he was. You got, ladies, I'm trying to tell you now. We're, it would be so uncomfortable, he wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Bitch, until we get this straight, ain't nobody sleeping tonight. Not a mother in here. And then you want to hide it. Because you know that you are going to do... I don't know where our relationship is in the pits. You got three children. When did we as American women become so desperate? We got fucking Larissa having to go down to ICE to fill out some paperwork because they're going to put a little tracking device on her ass, okay? And so we see her at the pool and she's talking about how lonely she is. And so now she goes back to Eric. And so she's sitting there with Eric and, and, and telling, oh my God, and telling Eric 
that you know the relationship with, between the two of them was was wasn't a good relationship because he seemed like he got tired. Eric says that she broke up with him by text message, y'all. That she sent a text message to him and broke up with him. And not only did she do that, but she called the police on him and filed a damn police report because some women was harassing her ass. <laughs> on social media and said that her ass was cheesy, that she had a cheesy ass. And so she said, so she believed that Eric was the one who perpetrated all this, that he was the one that got these women to do this. No, these women, a lot of these women on Instagram and on social media, they are bullies, period. And they will come in your DMs, come on your Instagram, they'll do all kinds of stuff, Facebook group, little secret Facebook groups only to hate on a bitch, okay, on television, because they ain't got else to do all damn day. They're not contributing to a society at all. These bitches are sitting around, okay, and they got all kinds of devices going on all at one time, bitch, just to stalk your ass. And so she gonna call and file a false police report because she said that she had already had some stuff for her. And so she had to get them before they got her. She said, I ain't getting got this time. Already got got before. I'm not getting got, god damn it, no more. And so Eric is like, I don't hold nothing against you or anything like that. But, you know, when Larissa said, you know, but Eric, you know, when I had sex with you, it was the best sex, but you got tired. So the two of them have made a decision that they're going to be back together. In the meantime and in between time, we see Colty and Dabby packing to go to Brazil, okay, because they're going over there with Jess. And so D Dabby knows, bitch, that she's never been out the country before, and she's going to be um, um, flying for at least 24 hours, <clears throat> Debbie gets her little ass up over there. And, you know, she was fine when she got off the plane and everything, getting the luggage and all that kind of stuff. And then when she met Jess and Jess and Colty was kissing, all of a sudden, Debbie ass got sick. And bitch, it got worse and, and worse. And, 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 and what? So, D Debbie, you know, Colty greets Jess, okay? Now, it Colty's, to me, his behavior was inappropriate. I, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead on and say it. But damn it, so was Debbie's, and so was Jessica's. Everybody was inappropriate, as far as I'm concerned. So Debbie, you know, meets Jess and everything, and Jess said, you ready for Brazil? And so Debbie is like, yeah, you know, I'm ready and everything. And so, you know, Debbie's standing outside. She's like, yeah, I can't wait to get back to the hotel and everything so I could be with Colty and have sex. Why would you say something like that in front of this man's mama? You can't be no more discreet than that. You can't say, you know, I'm just, I can't wait for us to get back to the hotel so that we can all relax. I know you all have to. She's so fucking inappropriate, okay? She think it's funny and all of that kind of stuff. She's a damn airhead. I don't care what nobody says. She is a damn airhead. Debbie says before she even left there that she's going to have to make sure that she intercepts and she intertwines herself and that she injects herself into every situation, okay? Every fucking situation because she said Colty made a mistake, so she ain't gonna let the bitch make no mistake. She, Debbie ain't nothing but a daggone wet suitcase, boo. A, 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 a wet piece of, a wet sack of shit who should have left her old 70-year-old ass back in America. Let this man live his damn life. Cut the ties off with this damn boy. You got to get up in the morning and say, call T, you ready? It's almost time for us to go. And then, Debbie, why would you go over there and not know what you need to do with your cell phone? You need to call your, your carrier and tell your carrier to change it to international from this day, starting to this day, so that you're not paying all them high-ass rates. Like, you don't, you don't know anything. You didn't get your own hotel room. You just living off your son. Now, look, damn it. it Taking care of your parents don't include vacations with your girlfriend, batch. It just doesn't include that. So y'all kiss my ass when he's taking care of his mother. So Debbie gets her ass over there. Just is inappropriate than I'm, okay? I don't care if she missed him or not. But you know what? He's equally inappropriate because he thinks, oh, you know, I, I, I don't think my mother likes her. Just don't think her mother like her. Bitch, I wouldn't like you either. You're getting your ass up and in. My fat ass son. I know he fat and funky and unattractive. And you sit up there. 
I'm going to suspect your ass, too, if my son was looking. If my fucking son looked like that, bitch, I know damn well you didn't want nothing but a K-1 visa. Because ain't a goddamn thing attractive for Now, when babies come out, you know, and the baby be ugly and everything, you see the baby, you be like, oh, look at the baby. But when the baby grow up and that baby 30, 40 years old, you be like, you's an ugly mother. Okay. <laughs> this bitch want a green card. Just like Debbie said, why the hell would she be wanting to, to date Colty long distance? Who the fuck want him but me? That's just not the truth. Who the fuck wants him but me? Debbie know this bitch want a green car. She's just trying to make sure she don't get it now. Bitch, when they got in that car and they was... Debbie said, oh, my God, are you fucking kidding me? And they was like, because he was like, yeah, so, uh, Mom, you know how he been. Uh, Mom, you know, um, we've been talking about the baby's names, and we said that if it was a boy, it would be um, Dominique. Dominique, right? Dominique. And if it's a girl, it's going to be Katiana. Debbie said, the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> the fuck what? Yeah, Katiana and Dominique. Debbie said, oh, so y'all already talking about baby names. She said, oh, okay, so this bitch is a little bit more conniving and everything than Larissa. This bitch on a whole nother level. I got to bring out the devil. I got to act like I'm sick up in this. I got to act like I'm about to stroke out, bitch. I'm about to act like I got to go on hospice. I got, I got to pull out the big guns. I don't feel good because you just get me to the hotel. Bitch, get me to the hotel. Well, you know, you know, Debbie, you are a bitch. Turn around. Debbie, them, they made Debbie sick as a dog. Debbie was through with Jess. She said, oh, this been going on longer than I thought it was. He more serious about this chick than I thought he was when these bitches just talk about naming the child. Girl, let me tell you, Debbie got up in that room. They found out that it wasn't but one room, and the room just had a, a one room that was on the side with two beds that had a door, and then it was a big room. Jessica has already said in no uncertain terms, bitch, that she wants to have sex. When they was coming up on the elevator, Debbie said, bitch, get me up, out, get me up to the room. I need to lay down for five minutes, bitch. I'm 70 years old, and I'm tired. I'm just tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I've been flying 24 hours, bitch. I ain't had no sleep and I'm tired. You sit up here getting baby names together. <laughs> Debbie lost the bitch on the elevator. I'd have been like, enough. <laughs> enough, mama. Enough. We know you tired, damn it. We know you sleepy. We know you don't feel good and you're just feeling good and shitty. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's enough. Now. <laughs> So they get up in the room. Debbie decide where she going to sleep at. She get up on the bed. Jessica coming in there still trying to talk to De Je um, Debbie. Debbie railed over on that bed and said, I'm going to tell you right now. Till you do right by me, bitch. <laughs> and let me get some sleep up in this. <laughs> Your life ain't going to be right. So that, so just, so Cody like, come on now. Let my mother. She was like, no, I'm going to talk to the. Debbie was like, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm tired and I'm sick. I don't feel good. Give me five minutes, bitch. Don't somebody get their ass. <laughs> so Colty goes out. So Jessica, Jessica was like, okay, but we ain't got, but you know, we're going to be right here. Your mother's staying in the room. He was like, yeah, my mother's staying in the room. She said, well, how we going? How we going? Debbie said, don't nobody want to hear that. Debbie is disgusted just even at the thought of hearing her nasty, fat, baby-making, hip-ass son have sex with that girl in that other room. <sighs> Y'all, this is the end of my damn review. This was a long review. It was too many goddamn couples. I'm sure that I have missed some things. Y'all talk about it in the comments section. Again, this is my review of 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After, Season 5, Episode 5, Drive Me Crazy. Bitch, they done drove me crazy. I love you all to pieces. I will be back out tomorrow with my review on Love After Lockup, Season 3, Episode 1. We got a new one, and I'll be also doing my review on, um, what is the other name of the show, y'all? Damn, what is the name of the show? 
not that they fiance the other way. Thank you all so much for being here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I love y'all. And don't forget that this rating was a C-minus, bitch. <laughs> Bye, y'all.